All right, Galatians chapter four. We'll probably finish up the chapter today. If you recall, if you recall uh, last time we were looking at how Abraham had had two wives. Did he, did he say wives? I think I said wives. Well, he had two <laughs> sons. Had two sons. I guess you know Hagar wasn't a wife. Had two sons, one by Sarah and one by Hagar. And they represent two covenants, the old covenant of works, the new covenant of grace. And we saw, we were looking a little bit last time, how, how that old covenant for, for living under the old covenant, under the law, under works, under self-righteousness, trying to striving hard to try to earn God's acceptance. We're, we're going to be in bondage. We're going to just, when we get to chapter five, we're going to see what the works of the flesh is, produces. It's going to produce uh, all kinds of unrighteousness. It's going to make us uh, feel condemned. It's going to, we're going to be in bondage. We're going to be critical of others. There's going to be a lot of strife. We're going to actually be persecute others. We'll, we'll see that. Um, be you know, judgmental, condemning of others. We're, all, we're always going to feel fearful and condemned that's what happens if we live under the law under the old covenant under by the flesh trying to earn our god's acceptance by contrast we saw that sarah represents the new covenant that's grace that's living by faith in christ resting in all that jesus has done for us resting that we are complete in christ that he's made us perfect by his one sacrifice forever that's living by faith, living by the spirit, living under the new covenant. And uh, what's going to happen there, we're, we'll see in chapter five, we're, when we're re resting in Christ, we're going to have the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, etc. We're going to be free. We're no longer going to be in bondage. We're no longer going to be feel condemned. Uh, we're going to be able to serve one another in love. We're going to be able to bear fruit to God, etc. And uh, And there's one other thing that that happens that is not so positive that is that we're going to be persecuted by those that that live according to the flesh and we looked at that a little bit last time what that persecution looks like um we saw that um ishmael he was the son born according to the flesh he persecuted isaac who was born according to the promise and all, all it says there was that he that he mocked isaac um, that's one of the things that will happen. We'll be mocked by those who live by the flesh. Another, I think Brandon brought it up. We're gonna one of the things you're gonna be accused of, especially if you're active in sharing your faith or if you if you try to teach grace, you're gonna be accused of what's known as antinomianism, which is you're saying you're encouraging people to sin. And if if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but they'll they'll say, oh, you're you're just saying it's okay to go out out and live like the devil that's something that paul had to deal with constantly he's always had to defend his ministry we see that in in uh romans 6 he said he said what am we saying now we're saying that it's okay to go out and, and sin because we're not under law but under grace he said may it never be god forbid so that's that's something you'll, you'll deal with if you're especially if you're uh active in sharing your faith um articulating the gospel um, there, there'll be some that accuse you of, of uh, saying that it's okay to go out and, and sin. Um, what are some of the other ways you, this persecution would come about? Oh, uh, you might, you may be accused of saying, of speaking against the law, against the law of Moses, the commandments. We saw that in, in Acts 6 and 7. That's what got Stephen stoned, said that he speaks against the law and against this temple. You, you'll get accused of saying, oh, so you're saying, you know, that the Ten Commandments are bad. No, we're not saying the Ten Commandments are bad. The problem is we're bad. We can't keep the commandments. But so, you know, and, the, and so um, that's another way you, you'll be possibly be persecuted. They'll say that you're speaking badly against the law or against the commandments. Um, Paul said in Romans 3, he says they said they slander you. Romans 3, 8 says, see, how did he put that? Let me see if I can get there real quick. Romans 3 8 says um, 3 8. No, that's not it. 3 5. What the heck? Oh, I'm in the wrong chapter. Sorry. 3. Yeah, 3 8. 
It says, and why not, as we are slander, slanderously reported, as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come. So there's going to be some that slander you like that, saying that you're that you're telling people to just go out and do evil so that good may come. Because remember, he says, uh, where sin abounded, grace abounded even more. So you know, the, so to someone who's living under the law, it sounds like you're saying just go out and sin because then God's grace is going to abound even more, and you'll have and you'll have a. Uh, a, you'll name your Zoom ID. It's going to be grace abounding because where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. So anyway, um, I don't know, is it, is, has anybody ever experienced that where you've been accused of, of you know, call it easy believism or, you know, greasy grace? And I, I hate these things when they say these kinds of things. They're What they're doing, it, it's really disparaging Jesus, what he's did on the cross has anyone ever experienced that where you've been accused of uh i don't know being light on sin or making the gospel too easy has anybody ever i have had? just just i was in a group setting one time it was a christian setting and mm -hmm. i forget exactly what we were discussing but i remember someone addressed me and said that I have blind faith because we were discussing, like, I guess something about faith. Yeah. It was like, Oh, that's blind faith. We're not talking about that. <laughs> mm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was kind of like that. Yeah. Like, I guess their conversation was more, um, it was more about, finding something that you had an experience with and not just blind faith. You know, I guess that wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. You had to work, do some type of work mm -hmm. to see the results rather than just having faith. Yeah. You know, I understand faith without works is dead. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but blind for it's like belief just wasn't enough. Yeah. Just believing wasn't enough. That's, that's what the issue was. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Anybody else? I remember sharing my faith with one of my coworkers. This was years ago, and he and his comment was, "Oh, so you're saying this is like a get out of jail free card? Yeah, you know, that yeah, you know, believe in Jesus, then you know, okay, then anytime you know, you, uh, you can play that get out of jail free card. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I guess if you want to call it that." And you know, I've had another one say to me, then all oh, then what you're saying is you can just go out and sin as much as you want. You know, if you're if you're not saved by keeping the commandments, if you're saved by believing in in Jesus, then you can go out and sin as much as you want. And yeah, you know, those are some of the things that, that people will, will say to you. Um had one time I I well when I it's probably about, I guess it's probably 25 years ago, um, shortly after I the Lord saved me. I started a Bible study at work, and at first there was a lot of people coming. And one one week, I I, I think I said something about you know we're we're forgiven of all of our sins, even the sins in the future, and that didn't go over well there because there's a lot of people that don't want to believe that your future sins are forgiven. And one the one fella he he brought it up and he said, oh, so what you're saying is that it's okay to go out and, you know, live any way you want. And I said, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's what you're saying. What I'm saying is you're forgiven of, of all your sins that Jesus paid for them all at the cross, even the sins of next week. Anyway, um, make a long story short, um, about half the people left the left the study because of that he he had influence on the others and said oh you know he jim's teaching heresy you know stop going so anyway half the half the class left so anyway those are just some examples of of, of what uh what you might face if you're if you start sharing the you know the, the message of god's grace with others so so the question we started we're starting off on today is let's see where is it question 27. How should we respond to this, this persecution when we're when we're persecuted by those 
that are living under law, those who are living according to the flesh, what what should our response be? How did you respond to persecution, Lori? I continue to do good. I mean, yeah. you know, what God says to do. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, inside my emotions, of course, I'm going to feel something because of the, you know, the backlash or the pushback. Sure. But um, just remembering what the word of God says does help to just continue doing what God says to do or or be obedient because God is going is with me and he's going to take care of the situation. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting him to take care of the situation. Amen. Amen. Like like Jesus, he continued to entrust himself to the one who judges justly. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyone else have any well, thoughts? Yeah, go ahead. My Please. response to that is Romans 4, 4, and 5. Mm, okay. Go that ahead. would be my response to that. Oh, you expect me to recall that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, to him who does works, mm. uh, wages are counted as uh, not not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him that does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, well, quote quote the scriptures. Um, I just want to say persecution does not feel well. I don't know how many people have experienced it in this group, yeah. but it does not feel good at all. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. feel hopeless. You feel like sometimes you want to react. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so that struggle is there to defend yourself sometimes. Sure. Um, we can set boundaries, yes, but yeah. sometimes you just want to tell them off sometimes. <laughs> So persecution doesn't feel well, but we I remember who I am and what Christ wants me to do. So Amen. Amen. Remember who you are in Christ. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Cause who who likes to be rejected? I sure don't like it, but you know, well, neither do I. Yeah. But that's that's the way it's gonna be. Everybody who desires to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul, Tim, Paul told Timothy. Sean, did you have something you were gonna add? No, 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 not so far. <laughs> okay. All right. Feel free to jump in when you have something to share. Right. Okay. Um, let's look at some of the things that uh, some of the scriptures and on, on how how they responded. Um, let's see. Well, well, first of all, in, in Acts chapter five, verse 41. Let's see, is this Peter and John? Let me see who that was. It was Acts 5 1. They counted, I'm sorry, not 5 1, 541. 541. Uh, let's see. They went on their way. This they were, this was uh, who was it? It's probably Peter and I'm thinking this is Peter and John. Chapter four is Peter and John. Let's see. Peter and John were arrested. Let's see, nice and Sapphira. Let's see. I don't remember who it was. Anyway, it was some some of the disciples. Yeah, Peter. Peter. Yeah, it was Peter. Um, they had to appear before Gamaliel's court, teacher of the oh, What verse are you in? Um, I'm in Acts chapter five. What I'm I'm wanting to get to is verse forty one. I was just looking to see what the the context. When they left was. the presence of the council. Rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the for the name. Amen. So they they rejoiced that they were that they had they were able to they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor, counter shame for the name of Jesus. So that's one way to to respond to it. Just rejoice because you know G what did Jesus say? He says, "If the world hates me, it's going to hate you as well." Right. So it shouldn't surprise us. P Peter says, don't be surprised when you face these fiery trials or that the brethren all over the world are, are experiencing it. So we can, yeah, we can rejoice. I mean, it's not fun. Like Lori said, it's not fun being persecuted, but we can rejoice that we're counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. So, and uh, someone once said, and, and it bears out in scripture, you know, if you're never, if, if you're never accused of, uh, uh, let's see what else I want to put. If you're never accused of antinomianism, never accused of speaking badly about uh, the commandments, never accused of being light on sin, then you're probably not uh, preaching the, the grace message because all the other apostles, all the apostles, Paul, they were always accused of being 
too easy on sin, making this salvation too easy. Um, so we should just rejoice that we're counted worthy to suffer shame, persecution for the name of Jesus. And really our um, persecution, it just pales in comparison with what he experienced and what many Christians around the world do. So, Amen. Good point, Heather. Yep. Good point. At, at, at most, we might get mocked. Maybe we don't get invited to a party or something like that. Yeah, our persecution is pretty mild. Someone will drop out of your Bible study. Oh, well. But in other parts of the world, people are losing their heads, losing their families. Look at how Jesus suffered. So, yeah, thank you, Heather, for putting that into perspective. Yeah, at Secret Church, uh, the focus there was... Uh... The underground church in North Korea. And, you know, it was talking about how within a home, parents can't talk to their children about faith or belief because wow. they might report them to the teachers. Mm. Um, you know, husband can't talk to wife about it. Wow. You know. Which country was this in? North Korea. North Korea. Okay. Wow. Hmm. Yep. That happened in China too. A good friends of mine for well, over twenty years uh, had to go. He married a Chinese lady, and when they went home, they had to go underground with their uh, church service. But when they also were in disguise as being teachers, so they would have church underground mm. so this is true mm. and it's still going on mm. um they since then moved to texas but it, that kind of situation is still going on thank you pony all right um let's see if you're still in acts chapter five um go to chapter seven acts seven Verse 51, 60. This is Stephen. I talked about him a little bit ago. Um, let's see. Let's see, where is it? Let me back up where he was accused of speaking against the law. Verse yeah, 52. Let's see. What page would that be, Jim? Say that again, Ryan. So what page would that be on? Oh, I don't know. I don't have the same Bible that you have. It's going to be, let's see. It's going to be about two-thirds of the way through your Bible. It's going to be right after the, the Gospel of Luke. Matthew, I'm sorry, the Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then comes Acts. So it's in the New Testament. It's going to be the fifth book of the New Testament. I think that's the end of chapter six it's it's the end of chapter well like when he's first accused maybe yeah yeah acts chapter six uh beginning of chapter seven eight yeah um yeah chapter six and seven yeah chapter six starting at oh about verse eight talk see there Stephen was full of grace and power. He was performing great wonders and signs. And they uh, they rose up. They argued with Stephen. They didn't like what was happening. But they were unable to cope with the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. And, of course, that wasn't human wisdom. That was It says he was full of grace and power, the Holy Spirit that was giving him wisdom. They, they secret, verse, verse 11, they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous blasphemous words against Moses and against God as some of the, the accusations because you know, he because Stephen if he was speaking about grace he was probably saying that you can't be saved by keeping the law of Moses that you have to be saved by trusting Jesus so they were slandering him saying he's speaking blasphemous things against Moses against God against God's law they stirred up people they dragged him away brought him before the council brought out false witnesses Verse 13, this man speaks nonstop against this holy place, That's a, that would be the temple, and against the law. So he's speaking against the law, the law of Moses, the commandments. 
We heard him say that this Nazarene Jesus will destroy this place. Remember, Jesus even said that himself, said, you destroy this temple and I'll rebuild it in three days. He's going to alter the customs which Moses handed down. You know, you're because he was saying that you're no longer bound by the laws of Moses. So they're slandering him. They fixed their gaze on him. He was sitting in the council. They saw his face like the face of an angel. They said, are these things so? Let's see, we're down in chapter 7 now. Uh, let's jump down to, let's see. Jump down to towards the end of chapter 7. Down to verse 51. Here's where Stephen's going to get pretty bold in what he's saying. He's, he's preaching to them about Jesus. And look what he says down in verse 51. He said, you men are stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart. Your ears are always resisting the Holy Spirit. You're doing just as your fathers did. See, so just got done telling them all about, about Jesus, what Jesus has done. And he says, which one of your, the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They killed those who had previously announced the coming of the righteous one. That's Jesus, the righteous one. They killed the prophets that, that were proclaiming Jesus was coming. Betrayers and murderers, you have now become. you become betrayers and murderers. You who received the law as ordained by angels, and yet none of you keep it. So you can see why they might have been a little upset with Stephen. Those are some pretty harsh words. But he was that was the Holy Spirit directing him to say that. He was full of grace and power. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. When they heard this, they were cut to the quick. They began gnashing their teeth at him. And verse 55, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed intently into heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He said, behold, I see the heavens opened up, the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice. They covered their ears. They rushed upon him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witness laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. You remember Saul. It's going to be the, become the Apostle Paul. They were stoning Stephen as he called upon the Lord. And what did he say to them? His words should sound a little bit familiar. Last couple of things he says there is very similar to what Jesus said on the cross. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Right before that, he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Remember, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So he was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was instructing him to forgive them. Just think that's something you could do without being filled with the Holy Spirit? Absolutely not. Yeah. No. Wow. If we were in that situation, God would give us the boldness. If, if we're resting in Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, He'd give us the boldness, give us the ability to forgive them like He forgave us. So that's another way to respond: forgive them, but don't hold back. Stephen, Stephen had he get, had some pretty harsh words for him, didn't he? He explained the gospel, and when they rejected, he said, "Look, you're you're being just like your fathers. You're resisting the Holy Spirit. This is the truth. Jesus is the only way. You can't be saved by keeping the law." You think you're keeping the law? I said, but not one of you are keeping it. And those are hard words for a, a proud person to hear. And it resulted in Stephen's death. Yeah, My question. Yeah, go ahead, Lori. So this group that is doing the persecution, persecuting mm -hmm. Stephen, or it's like, is this the church persecuting the church? Well, sort of. <laughs> yeah. And, and, that, and I'm glad you said that because... A lot of this persecution from those that are living by the flesh actually does come from the church. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've experienced it. There's a lot of people in the church. They may be saved. They may not be saved. But either way, they're still living under the law, just like the, the Galatians. They're trying. They're striving. They're not resting in Christ. They're striving to earn God's acceptance through their own works. And yeah, a, okay. lot of the, a lot of the persecution actually comes from the church. Now, in this case, these were these were Jews, devout Jews, but but it, yeah, unfortunately, it, I've experienced it from within the church. So have I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do well, you think this has a lot to do with people not 
being delivered and and healed? I didn't catch the first part of that. Uh, do you think this has a lot to do with people not being delivered or healed within the church? Well, they haven't been delivered from the law. I, I could agree with that. Um, when when you say you're not being delivered and healed, they haven't yet experienced the the freedom that Christ offers. They haven't been healed from their their spiritual uh, spiritual illness, if that's what you're referring to. Uh, I was also referring to physical illness. Mm, I don't. I'm not sure how that would come into play. I mean, if people in the church are persecuting other things within the church, yeah. I'm saying we are seeing this another way. Could that be a hindrance of them not getting healed oh. from their illnesses? Oh, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I do you have a scripture that comes to mind that, to support that? Uh, no, I was just asking. I was thinking about. It's relating to sin. Yeah. Yeah. So um, maybe I need to get the scripture straight first and before I ask questions. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't, don't hold back asking questions. I just don't have a, a scripture <laughs> to support that. No, none, there's no scripture comes to mind to, to support that, but that, I wouldn't rule it out. Well, if you think about it, a lot of the persecution that comes from other churches, mm -hmm. that comes from within churches, if you look at those, they fall right in line with the Pharisees. The Pharisees were stuck on the law. Yep. They were legalistic yep. in their tendencies. And so often, conflict within a church that goes even to the point of splitting a church mm -hmm. um, often goes to something legalistic that they're stuck on yeah some mm -hmm. secondary issue mm -hmm. that they take as a primary issue yeah and the that's a hill that they've chosen to die on and it's just a case of legalism mm -hmm. yeah good point yeah thank you sean yeah yeah how, how many churches have split over over the years over and and yeah, sometimes it's a significant issues but not always go ahead connie yeah yeah i'll say a little stupid stuff they'd be splitting over yeah uh, and why would us talk about arguing against you're not supposed to argue about scripture mm. and things like that yeah now there are certain things that you know we do need to take a stand on you know, which is, you know, the deity of Christ, salvation by, by faith alone, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you know, we don't, we don't want to compromise God's grace, don't want to compromise the, the gospel. Now you have those primary tenets that it's like five items, something like that. Pillars that make up the foundation of faith. But everything out of that, you know, is baptism symbolic or is it is it a, a sacrament or, you know, yeah. people go crazy over this. Yeah, yeah. That's why there's so many like, different denominations. Yeah. These are things that brothers and sisters should be able to talk about and not divide over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Connie. I, I was thinking that was probably the basis of what I was talking about when they have differences of, of, of a of a thought of a dominant denomination or or just a principle. It's a dis different a, a, a difference, mm -hmm. and yet the difference is so profound that the, the that church will almost act like they hate you because you don't think like that. And to me, hate it will will um it will be one of those stumbling blocks yeah. for your um victory or, or or your healing spiritually or physically mm -hmm. so that's mainly the the foundation of what i was trying to, okay. to get a grip on yeah 
Well, yeah, and as far as healing, yeah, that you do have a point there. You know, if you're if you're in constant turmoil, constant strife, that affects you not just spiritually, but that could affect you sp uh, physically as well. So, so yeah, I can see where you're coming from on that, Connie. Um, let me see, Jim. Yeah, go ahead. Book of, the Book of Titus three nine says yeah. this is new New Living Translation. Yeah. It says, do not get involved in foolish discussions mm -hmm. about spiritual mm -hmm. yeah. about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about mm -hmm. obedience to Jewish laws. Yeah. These things are useless and a waste of time. Yeah. Amen. And I think that's what causes divisions if we're not mm -hmm. careful. We can be tempted to fall into those traps. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you um say that reference one more time? This was the New English translation, Titus 3, 9. It says, do not, do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. Mm -hmm. These things are useless and a waste of time. Yep. The English version says, but avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Yeah. Yeah. And then keep going there. Re reject a factious man. That, see, that would be uh, what would be another way to a oh, divisive. Re warn a divisive person once and then warn him a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. So, yeah. Wow. The division. That's some pretty harsh words there. Mm -hmm. to, to give you all a, a very, uh, even more uh, of a down to earth example, when I was coming up, I went to a church that we, the women were not allowed to wear earrings or makeup or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And if you did, the opinion was uh, to persuade you that you need to be saved. And that you have to get to the altar to get sanctified and saved again because you think like that. And mm -hmm. then if you didn't change according to to that church, then you would consider going to hell and they uh, they shunned you. And, 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 and to me, that was a facet of hating. Mm -hmm. And to me, that still goes back to the different things that we just talked about in Titus. And it also talks to me, it also meant that you, you wouldn't, that they wouldn't get healed um, spiritually or physically. They, they, it would be sin. But they, according to them and the way they thought that they were right and if you wore your earrings and makeup and stuff, you were of the world and you were going to go to hell. And if you didn't conform, then you're lost and they had anything to do with you. You were shunned and mm -hmm. stuff. So that was another reason why I made the statement that I made. Mm -hmm. Well, and that and that's a good example, Connie, of exactly what we're talking about here. They're they're saying they're basically saying that you're not that Jesus isn't enough. That it's faith in Jesus <clears throat> that you also have to change the way you dress. That um, you know the way you look. It's it's adding more to the gospel. It's it's taking away from what Christ has done. So yeah, that's a good example, Connie. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Titus, let's see, while we're, if you're still in Titus, there's a couple verses there that's worth looking at. Uh, Titus 2 uh, is one place where, how we, how we can respond when someone says, when someone says, oh, this, you know, this, this easy believism or this grace is too easy. Titus 2, you can, you can explain to them what God's grace does for you. It, Titus 2, verses 11 through 14, explain to him that it's God's grace is what teaches you to say no to ungodliness. Verse 11, it's the grace of God has appeared. It brings salvation to all people. And here's what grace does. Grace instructs us to deny ungodliness in our worldly desires and, let's see, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age. It's God's grace that does that. The law can't do that for us. But, and then, as Timothy says, as Paul told Timothy, he said, the law is good if you're using it lawfully. 
But the law is not made for a righteous person. It's not made for a believer. It's made for the ungodly. It's made for the unrighteous. It's made for the lost person. That's what the law is for. So that's another way to, to explain it to someone who's who insists on living under the law, who insists that that you're teaching grace, that it's that it's giving people license to sin. Explain to them that the that grace actually teaches us to to say no to sin, and it's the law that stirs up our sinful desires. Um, so anyway, that's another way to to respond to it. Um, let's see. Romans 12 says that we're to bless those who persecute us. That's that's a, something that also requires being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's something that goes against our, our human nature. So bless those that persecute us. Um, Matthew 5 says that we're blessed when they persecute us because the kingdom of heaven is ours. We, we know the kingdom of heaven is ours when we're persecuted for the name of Jesus because of grace. Uh, let's see. Do not return evil for evil. Let's see. Uh, yeah, explain to them what the law is used for. The law is to show them that they're a sinner. And I guess you could take them to Matthew 5 to show if they're insisting that they they can save themselves through the law. Take them through Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, what Jesus said. You you. That you heard in the law that says thou shalt not murder, but I say to you, if you're even angry with your brother, you're in danger of the fires of hell. You're guilty of murder. If you lust after a person, you're guilty of adultery. That's another way to to uh, to respond. If they think they're keeping the law, take them through Matthew five and say, okay, let's see, let's see how well you're doing. Jesus said you must be perfect, as Father in heaven is perfect. Let's see. So, all right, let's go back to, oh, there's one. Well, keep your finger in Titus. We'll get back to it in a minute. Let's, and we'll jump back to Galatians 4. We're down to Galatians 4 verses, okay, verse 29 is what we just read about the persecution the one who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. So it is now also. We're going to continue to be persecuted. So now here's an interesting verse here. Verse 30 says, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. So what do you think that's all about? Oh, let's see. Who did the bond? First of all, who did the bond woman? What did the bond woman re represent? Agar. Sin. Work. Agar. Work, self righteousness. Yeah, work. Bondage. Yeah, work, self righteousness, bondage, the law, the commandments, Mount Sinai. So we're to cast out that bond woman. So what does that mean to cast out the bond woman? Cast out the works, the, the legalists. Yeah, the legalists. First of all, we're to not to be under the law. Mm -hmm. And if, yeah, in, in some cases, you get to cast out the legalists. Um, we saw how Stephen spoke to them pretty sharply. If you're still at Titus, look at Titus. Go back to Titus chapter 1, verse 10 through 16. Titus 1. And, and this is a, a hard one. <laughs> it's something that your leaders most likely will have to deal with uh, your elders and and uh it, yeah it's not fun I'll, I'll tell you that <laughs> so you, you can be thankful if you're if you're not an elder that you're gonna have to deal with this <laughs> um, I, I actually actually had my first church as an elder we actually had to ask our pastor to to resign over legalism ouch yeah, it was not fun. It was that was one of one of the worst experiences of my life. I can, oh no. Yeah. Did you say one ten, Jim? Yeah, Titus one. Uh, let's see. Talks about yeah. There are many rebellious men, empty talkers, deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. Remember who those of the circum circumcision are? 
The Judaizers. Right. The Judaizers, those who are living under the law, the, the legalists, these are the same ones that Paul is talking about in Galatians. They're the, the Judaizers. They're the ones that were coming in saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law of Moses in order to be saved. So they're rebellious, they're empty talkers, they're deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, those that are the legalists, the Judaizers, those that are trying to put you in bondage under the law. They must be silenced because they are upsetting whole families, teaching things they should not teach for the sake of sordid gain. In some cases, they're doing it for, for their own selfish reasons. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons, etc." Anyway, uh, well, let's keep going. This testimony is true. For this cause, reprove them severely that they may be sound in the faith. Remember how, how Stephen, he reproved them severely, didn't he? That, those are some pretty harsh words Stephen gave to them. He said, you're stiff-necked, you're uh, uncircumcised in part, you're always resisting the Holy Spirit. He said, Moses gave you the law, and not one of you keeps it. So we're to reprove them severely so that they may be sound in the faith. And Pete, Stephen's doing it for the same reason Jesus had harsh words. Remember how Jesus had harsh words for the Pharisees? Matthew 23, he called them, what did he call them? You whitewashed tombs. But he did it out of love. It, pardon me? Oh, okay. No, I was just saying whitewashed tombs. Yeah, whitewashed tombs. You're full of dead men's bones. You look good on the outside. You're full of dead men's bones. But Jesus did it in love. I remember Matthew 23, right after he got done saying that, he, he wept over them. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets, um, how I long to gather you like a like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. So you know, when we're speaking sharply to people like that, like Jesus did, like Stephen did, it's out of love. It's, you know, it's not because we're wanting to you know condemn them. Not, we, don't, we don't want to condemn them to hell. We want them to be saved from, from being condemned. So in Titus, Paul's letter to Titus says, reprove them severely that they may be sound in the faith. And you ever notice how Jesus, you know, he only, Jesus only ever had harsh words for the, the self-righteous. You know, when he was dealing with, with sinners like the woman at the well, the woman caught in adultery, um, um Zacchaeus he had he had kind uh loving words for them because they were the ones that knew they were they were sinners they knew they needed a savior but the ones that were self-righteous living under the law he had harsh words for them because that's what they needed to hear they needed to hear that that hey you're not the righteous person you think you are you're not keeping the law even though you think you are so anyway so reprove them let's see where am I? Um, okay, yeah. So reprove them severely so that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish myths and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny him being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. Boy, those are some harsh words, aren't they? And, and that's the legalists. That's the, the Pharisees. They profess to know God. And that's, the, that's people in many of the churches today, particularly your mainline churches. They're, they're really no different than the Pharisees, the scribes. They're, they're trying to earn God's acceptance through keeping the commandments, through, through whatever the works are, the works of the flesh. So we have to speak to them sharply because, um, I don't know, because Jesus did, Stephen did, Paul did. I don't know. It's it's not fun, though. I, anybody like doing that? I don't like confrontation. I don't, uh, neither do I. Yeah. I'd rather tell people, you know, God loves you. Jesus died for you. I'd, I'd much rather do that. I'd much rather <laughs> talk to the woman at the well, the woman uh -huh. coming to the I'd I'd much prefer that. You talk to somebody sharply, you might get beat up in church. Mm -hmm. They might kick you out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you well, think I, I about it. Pray. Paul even I, had to do that. I, go, go ahead, Brandon. What? No, I was going to say, I'm just thinking about in, what is it, Acts? Uh, oh, my brain's fried right now. 17 or 21, where Paul, well, actually, no, it wouldn't be in that, in that, that account, but Paul 
had to write to he wrote to Peter and who was it uh, James and he said you know he had to re he publicly rebuked them yeah and you're talking about at that point in time Peter was you know revered all throughout Christendom yeah. he was you know he was so powerful at the time with the Holy Spirit he's walking through the streets healing people and here you have Paul this guy coming in and saying look you got it wrong you know the way you're 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 going about and uh, he'd have, he was afraid that the Judaizers had gotten to him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That, that's, that was in, well, it was in, in Acts 15. It's all, it's also in Galatians. I think it's Galatians chapter two. Hey, yeah. said that I had to rebuke. It was Peter and, and James said the pillars. And like you said that, I mean, Peter is, you know, he's the, the rock. He's, he's very highly revered even, even today. And yeah, Paul, great point, Brandon. How hard must that have been for for Paul to confront Peter and James, the two pillars, James, the half brother of Jesus, Peter, Jesus's right hand man, and here's Paul, a, a, a blasphemer, a, pro, a persecutor of the church. He's coming in here and he's got to confront Peter and James. And he did it to their face publicly, and to their credit, though they they repented, they 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 were humble enough that they accepted god's word through paul that that's pretty amazing isn't it most uh pillars most pastors are not very receptive when uh someone like a, a paul or a you know a layman a lay elder that most of them are not receptive at all when when they're rebuked by you know, your pastor just like being rebuked by his some elder. you can't even talk to yeah because I was thanks. part of one of the mega churches at one time, and um, you couldn't even talk to the senior pastor. Yeah. Um, you you had to make a special appointment. Hmm. Wow. I was thinking too, um, because the pastor is the pastor and the head of the church. You know, it's hard for them to hold themselves accountable mm -hmm. at times. Um, they're used to holding lay people and others, you know, elders mm -hmm. and people underneath them accountable, but not themselves. Right. Yeah. Like that's... I said, that's Jim's job. Yeah. It's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the elder board. board. Yeah, yeah. Elder board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I'm thankful that Living Water is is elder led, not a single pastor led. You know, there's there's eight. Mm -hmm. We've got eight elders right now. There's soon to be twelve. Everyone has the same voice, you know, Pastor Mike, when we're on on day to day operations, he he's leading the staff. But when it comes to decisions by the elder board, he's just one of uh, the uh, the rest of the eight. His, mm -hmm. his voice carries the same weight as everyone else's. And he wants it that way. That's, you know, he, he doesn't want to be if, if you're if, if you're serving humbly the way God intends for leaders to, to serve, you don't want to be the head honcho. You want to be on a. a a plurality of, of elders you don't want to be uh you know a, i don't know what you want to call it you don't want to be the the man in charge you want to be one of the dozen. dictatorship the dictator pardon me you you, you want to have accountability sure uh, yeah 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 it's important because i know it's just that there was no accountability for any of the the pastors there mm -hmm. and that church was really in trouble there's a lot of stuff went on a lot of false stuff a lot of destroying families there's no and and the people that should have been in the bishop that should have been accountable was actually afraid of the person the pastor that was doing all this stuff hmm. yeah it was afraid to yeah was afraid hmm. to uh talk to them about what afraid of them and afraid of talking to them hmm. and to me that's that's terrible yeah, that's certainly not the way God intends for a church to operate. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Well, down to 30. Okay, so, all right. So cast out, we're back to Galatians chapter four. Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. So are you a... Child of the slave woman or the free woman? Free woman. The free. Free, free. woman, right? Free. Yeah. We're, we're a child of, of Sarah, the, the free woman. Yeah. So 
who set you free? Jesus. 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 Yeah. So mm -hmm. how, how did he? How did he set you free? Giving himself as ransom on the cross for us, okay. taking our sins. Amen. Gave himself as a ransom. Took upon himself our sins. Amen. What? What else? What else did he do? Gave us a reward. Gave us okay. inheritance. Okay. He's got a, a reward, a reward of the inheritance plan for us. He acts, uh, let's see, Acts 13, he, he set us free from everything that the law could not set us free from. He, he justified us from everything that the law could not justify us from. What else did he do? He adopted us. Amen. He adopted us. <laughs> what did you say? He adopted us. <laughs> yeah. How awesome is that? We're out of God adopted, mm -hmm. legally binding with an eternal inheritance. Yeah, I mean, you, you go through Ephesians 1, and that talks about everything that we are in Christ. Amen. Um, royalty, whereas we were once once beggars and, and redeemed. Amen. Start pulling stuff up out of out of nowhere. Yeah, I better. <laughs> he he made us holy and blameless. He he chose us to be holy and blameless before God. We're whole, how does that make you feel to, that we're holy and blameless before God? Is that that's something good to know? Yeah, it's, it's definitely it's, God. Yeah, make us feel small. We're yeah. not on that. Yeah, God. God wants, he chose us to be holy and blameless. God wanted us. He, he adopted us. I mean, it feels, I mean, just to know that truth is good because sometimes when, I guess I should use myself as an example, when I'm not feeling my best before God and I go to God in prayer, it's like a weight sometimes or whatever's going on in my life. But just knowing that truth yeah. sets me free from any form of condemnation. Amen. Amen. He set us free from condemnation. Even on our worst days. Yeah. Condemned. Yeah. He still considers us holy and blameless even on mm -hmm. our worst day. He set us free from fear, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's, and they say fear is a snare. Fear of man is a snare, mm -hmm. but I also think fear of our fear to um, forgive ourselves is a snare too, mm -hmm. and to accept God's word, what He says that we are blameless and holy. Amen. On our bad days. Amen. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First John chapter four. You just prompted a thought on a on a scripture. First John chapter four. First John chapter four. Oh, let's see. How about oh gee whiz, we could start anywhere there. Um we could start at verse 13, I guess. First John chapter four, verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him. We abide in Christ and he in us because he has given us his spirit. So we, because he gave us his spirit, we, we know that we abide in him. Like, like John 15 says, you abide in Christ, you're going to bear fruit. Well, if his spirit's in you, you're abiding in him. You're living in him. So we know that we abide in him. We know that he abides in us because of the spirit we have beheld. We bear witness that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And then here, here's what I wanted to get to, starting verse 16. We have come to know and have believed and relied on the love which God has for us. We, we need to rely on that love that he has for us. Rely on, mm -hmm. that, uh, rely on the love that he has for us. God is love. The one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. So live in that love, rely on that love. And this is love, verse 17. I'm sorry, by this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment 
because ha as he is, so also are we in this world. Jesus is righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. So we can have confidence in the day of judgment. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves mm -hmm. punishment or torment. The one who fears is not perfected in love. So we have confidence in the day of judgment because we know there's not going to be any punishment for us. Jesus took it all. He took all the punishment for us. So when at day of judgment, we can stand before him with confidence, knowing that we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. We stand before God in that day of judgment. He's going to say, you are my beloved child. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your, your Lord, your master. He's going to see that you're clothed in the righteousness of Christ, and you're going to receive the eternal, the reward of the internal inheritance. All right. Does anybody have anything else to add? That's probably that's probably a good place to end. So rely on that love. Be free. Walk in the freedom that He purchased for us, and we'll get to. Chapter five, we're going to see, do, do not be yoked again in that, uh, or do, do not be entangled again in that yoke of bondage. So that pretty much finishes up chapter four. Any, anything that's stood out for you in chapter four? Jesus is constantly interceding for us. He set us free. All right. Does somebody want to pray for us? Have a volunteer? Dan or Sean, either of you would like to pray for us? Yeah, I'll, I'll step up. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. Uh, Lord, thank you for tonight. Um, thank you for this time that we got to spend together in fellowship with one another, as well as the time that we've spent um, studying your word and um, pulling out the, uh, the nuggets and pearls that you have for us uh, that we can take into every day and apply and uh, keep in mind uh, especially that we are sons and daughters of the free woman and uh, not a slave mm -hmm. uh, not tied to the law mm -hmm. but thank you for that knowledge that you've given us and um, just uh, ask that you would be with each of us and uh, those who are not here um until we come back together again in jesus name amen amen, amen. All right. joanna when's your next event oh uh, fourth of july we have the star barn uh, in elizabeth town okay and brandon what day is that oh wow Somebody wake up, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, wake up, Brandon. Brandon. Brandon what day is the 4th of July? Uh, <laughs> it's the oh, I think that's on the 4th of July this year. What day is it? Thursday. Yeah, it's a Thursday. Okay. There'll be a van that will take people. Okay. Three o'clock? Yeah. Three o'clock meet. I, at, I uh, believe it's three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Sean, are you still wanting to go to that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You'll just I'll, I'll get with you and I'll go grab your address and I'll pick you up and go from there. Yeah, I can just Was text the van over leaving from the church. Is yeah. the van leaving from the church? Yeah, from the church. Uh, I have to see how I'm coming along and mm. if I if I'm back to work and all that stuff. That's what one I would like to though. It's what three weeks. I'm a, I'm a, yeah. Okay. So all right. Next week is going to be VBS. So we'll 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 skip the study so we don't interfere with that. Since several of you are going to be involved. Let's see. Um. So July second is that that'll be our next schedule. Is that 
Want to wait that long? It's one, two, it's three weeks. Yeah, that'll work. That work for everybody? July 2nd? Is it July 2nd? Yeah, that's going to be mm -hmm. on Tuesday. That won't interfere with the July 4th holiday. Okay. All right. And then who who is that, Leah? Uh, 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 who's that that can't sleep? Uh, that would be Lori. Hey, Lori. Connie. Okay. <laughs> hey. I'm always getting you confused. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I ask who. I'll pray. I'll pray especially. Is drink some warm water, put on some Christian music, praise God with all your heart. Next mm. thing you know, you'll be asleep. Mm. So you start reading your, your word. Yeah. Lori. Okay. Thank you, Connie. Right. You're welcome. All right. Night, everybody. Night. Thank you, everybody. Night. Thanks, everybody. Night. Bye. All right. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye. Blessed week. Bye.